for our meeting this evening. I'd like to uh, call this meeting to order. Mary Jo, can you call the roll, please? Kathy Pucci. Here. Mary Mill here. Here. Kevin here. Here. Mark Politsky. Here. Ron Van Kirk. Here. Meg Ryan Shockey. Here. Andy Selhurst. Here. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> Following the Pledge of Allegiance, we will recognize the moment of silence as requested by Councilwoman Ryan Shockey. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. The first item on the agenda this evening is the approval of minutes from the meeting dated March 11, 2019. Are there any comments or questions? Motion to approve. Second. To approve, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belbeer? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Mark Klitsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shackey? Yes. Andy Selbert? Yes. Just as a note, there will be two executive sessions this evening during our meeting, the first of which will be to interview the mayor's candidate for recreation commissioner. We'll go into executive session following uh, the reports from our directors. Following the executive session, we will then vote on the confirmation of our candidate uh, to this office. Then we do anticipate to go into executive session once again at the end of our regular agenda to discuss a potential purchase of public property. At this time, we'll have the public session. If anyone in the audience has anything to say for the good and wealth of the city of Brooklyn, please step forward and state your name and address and you'll be recognized. Please keep your comments to five minutes or fewer. Good evening, everyone. Victor Ardito, 7439 Outlook Avenue. I mentioned this last time. I don't know what the outcome is, but the uh, left turn lane going north on, excuse, excuse me, going south on Ridge, going into North Cliff, how it goes into on oncoming traffic, and makes the left turn coming out of North Cliff from the shopping center a little, a little hard to do. It's not a normal left turn. If they're not able to correct it on this striping, will that be down on the agenda for the next time that they do the striping? And another remark, they talk about uh, the death row and they're not doing anything for the people now. They're not going to do it because it's possibly it could hurt them some. Well, the, the people that are on death row didn't really do any nice things. So, I mean, if, if the injection hurts a little, you know, sorry. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kelly Crawl. I reside at 10523 Manoa Avenue. Um, as the current Brooklyn Music Booster President, I would just like to speak on behalf of the boosters and state that we recently passed a motion to fully support Issue 1. Secondly, we would also like to thank those of you on council and in the public for taking time out to attend Willy Wonka two weeks ago. It is quite apparent the caliber of talent that we have here in Brooklyn. Speaking for myself now, <clears throat> next to marching band, play season is my second favorite time of the year. This year we had 140 students in the play, that is 10% of the entire student population. Marching band typically has about 90 students and that's approximately 20% of the high school population. The band itself is the largest student organization in the district. Next year, <clears throat> my son will be a senior. He's on the drum line in the marching band. He plays in the pit. He's on the hockey team that you recognized just two weeks ago for being three-time champs, and he plays baseball. He is busy from mid-July when band camp starts until the beginning of June when he plays in the pit at graduation. And he is looking forward to his senior year and all the things that come with it. <clears throat> if issue one fails, extracurriculars such as band and sports will be cut. It's not a matter of if they will be cut, it's been made quite clear they will be cut. And students like my son will then be going to school with nothing to occupy their free time and nothing to keep them motivated. Extracurricular activities are an important part of school. Yes, they're there to learn, but school is more than just math and history and memorizing facts. Extracurricular activities help shape our children. It teaches them discipline and structure, teamwork and citizenship. One look at marching band on Friday night and you see all of that. If issue one fails, all of that goes away. 
Not all of our students will be getting academic scholarships for college. Some students rely on sports or music or theater. And if we don't have sports or music or theater, then those students lose out on those scholarship opportunities. If they want to go to college for those things, they have nothing to back it up. I understand that $20 a month is a lot for some people, but speaking as a single mom with a son who just started driving and who plays the most expensive sport, I learned to make it work. And for the next 10 years, nine of which I won't even have a student in the district, I will make it work. I believe that a strong school system makes a strong city and a strong city is desirable for new families. I strongly urge all of you on council and in the community to seriously consider su supporting issue one. We currently have newer administration that has been doing, been doing great things in our schools. They have been fiscally responsible the last few years and are only asking for this emergency levy due to the cuts in state funding. I know we are always preaching that it's for the kids, but it seriously is for the kids and they deserve to have as many opportunities afforded to them as possible. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments I'd like to make? Okay, thank you. We'll now move on, on with reports of committees, commissions, and boards. We'll begin this evening with the Domestic Abuse Commission, Councilwoman Ryan Chuck. Thank you. The Domestic Abuse Commission will meet tomorrow, Tuesday, March 26th at the Fire Station Community Room at 6 o'clock. We will have a guest speaker, Judge Ashley Kilbane, <coughs> and I hope to see you there. Head on to my report. Thank you. Next up was the Finance Committee. We did meet this evening at 6.30 in the City Hall Conference Room to discuss the following uh, items. I will only review the items that are up for a vote tonight uh, and that are new to the agenda. Uh, we do have three notifications from the administration for um, funds that were donated. The first one is funds, and actually this one here is actually a do donation made by the Hudson City Schools uh, for six <coughs> timing system touch pads worth $3,000, and those will be used in the Recreation Center pool for our swim meets. And then uh, council was also notified of a $6,900 um, Cleveland Foundation grant that Brooklyn was awarded. This is a summer internship program, and this will be a graduate student from a local college, and they'll be working in the building department with Mr. Kulsar and his team there. And then lastly, we were notified by the police department that the city was awarded $26,316 from the Ohio Attorney General's 2018-19 um, Law Enforcement Body Armor Program, and this will be used to purchase personal uh, body armor for each police officer. Uh, the grant reimburses up to 75% of the cost of each vest. Uh, there was one request uh, that was uh, in our agenda this evening, and that was a request uh, from the mayor regarding the um, construction of the uh, American Roadway Extension and Rehabilitation in the City of Brooklyn. And this was in regards to the bids that were um, received. We received four bids from four different contractors. Uh, the winning bid was from Fabrizi Trucking and Paving uh, for $1,108,552. And this is actually 12% less than what uh, the engineer anticipated the cost would be. And so that was the lowest and best bid. And the committee did recommend that council approve that bid this evening. Up for third reading adoption this evening is ordinance 2019-9, amending section 351, prohibiting standing or parking spaces of the codified ordinance of the city of Brooklyn. And uh, this adds already to our parking code that would prohibit people from parking uh, within 12 inches of the widest part of the uh, apron in front of people's uh, um, where their driveways are. Uh, we had several residents, particularly over in the Marquardt Park area, that stated it was very difficult for them to get out of their driveways due to the, a lot of times the heavy uh, parking over there. So this would kind of ensure they have a little bit extra um, space to be able to uh, get out of their driveway. Uh, Ordinance 2019-12 is on second reading, but the administration is actually passed by emergency. And this is the uh, payment of $130,530 to CW Courtney. And this is for their engineering uh, services dealing with the um, American Greeting Site Roadway Extension Project <coughs> that we've discussed numerous times here in Council. Uh, on our new business this evening, we had um, a guest with us, uh, Justin and Alex were with us, and this is for Ordinance 2019-15, and this is authorizing the mayor to enter into a consulting services agreement with Macaulay and Company. Uh, they're going to provide various services to the city of Brooklyn. Uh, we did have a rather lengthy discussion uh, in finance meeting regarding this, and the job of this company uh, will be to coordinate communications and also to apply uh, for various grants. Uh, the cost of this is $5,000 per month, and it's a one-year contract, and I'm sure the mayor will address this further when she uh, gives her report, but the um, committee did recommend that council adopt this this evening. And then 
Uh, lastly, on first reading is Ordinance 2019-16. This is amending Section 351-20, uh, waivers of the codified orders of the City of Brooklyn. And this uh, involves the parking fees <coughs> in the city. Uh, the new parking fees uh, for prohibited parking will be $25. For a fire lane violation will be $50. And for a handicap violation will be $250. And that is if the fine is paid within 10 days. Uh, beyond that, it'll be up, go up to $75, $100, and $350 respectively. And uh, this is the first time that these parking fees have been changed since 1995. And so we're updating these to get uh, into the current times. And uh, the council does meet, or the committee meet, the finance committee does meet every uh, council meeting at 6.30 in the, in the um, conference room, and all are welcome to attend. We'll now move on with the Recreation Board, Councilman Kansky. Thank you. Registration for Brooklyn's youth baseball will run through May 6th at the Brooklyn Rec Center. You can register in person or online at www.activityreg.com. Fees, Brooklyn residents, $55. A child attends a school in Brooklyn, $65. Non-resident, $75. Three-year-old T-ball, $50. <clears throat> Resident or non-resident. All participants, all participants must bring a copy of their birth certificate at the time of registration. All residents, including St. Thomas More and Heritage Christian, must have a current Brooklyn resident ID card. $15 late fee will apply after the deadline. If anyone would like to be a volunteer coach, please indicate your interest at time of registration. For information on any of these programs, please contact Marie McGinty. 216-635-4284 or mcginty at brooklynohio.gov. The next recreation board meeting will be held on April 15th in the rec center meeting room at 7 p.m. and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chansky. Uh, the Public Safety and Environmental Committee met prior to the Finance Committee this evening at 615 and that was to discuss Ordinance 2019-7 establishing Chapter 746 of the Codified Ordinance of the City of Brooklyn to create housing protections for victims of domestic violence and affected landlords. Uh, this will be a new code uh, that will be put in, if it's a pass, that will go into our code. And um, this was an ordinance that was drafted at the request of Mrs. Meg Ryan Shockey. And this is her legislation, so I'm going to uh, turn it over to her and she can explain further what this legislation does. Thank you. Um, so when I took over as chair of the Domestic Abuse Commission uh, last year, the first thing I did was research information on the topic um, and reach out to similar organizations around the nation. Uh, one thing that I found interesting was that Ohio was only one of 13 states with no uh, laws such as this one that um, Brooklyn introduced, the 2019-7. Uh, four tenants of uh, tenant rights for victims of domestic abuse. So what this ordinance does is allows a victim of domestic abuse with, um, with uh, protect, uh, police protection order to um, either get their locks changed by their landlord or to be able to break their lease without uh, losing the rest of, so usually when you break a lease early, you have to pay out the rest of the months that are on your lease. So it allows them to break the lease without any additional costs. Um, and since Brooklyn is one of uh, the communities with the Domestic Abuse Commission, um, this was introduced for their, by that commission, by the, yeah, by that commission, sorry. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, there were some changes that were made to this ordinance this evening, and so when we get to that legislation, we will, I will read those changes into the uh, record, and we will amend it, and then it will be on second reading. Next up is the uh, legislative update, Council and Belvier. Thank you. I have commented on the transportation bill and budget being proposed in the state of Ohio. It concerns a number of things we can relate to, especially how much we will be paying for a gallon of gasoline. Governor DeWine requested the legislature to approve an 18 cent raise in per gallon state tax. We currently pay 28 cents in state tax per gallon. In House Bill 62, the House passed a measure that would raise the tax 10.7 cents, 7 cents this year and 3.7 cents next year, and there would be no automatic raise to amount for inflation. The bill then went to the Ohio, Ohio Senate. 
Last Thursday, the Senate approved a two-year transportation budget with only a six cent a gallon increase beginning July 1st. That is only a third of the amount of the governor that the governor wanted and is less than 10.7 cents that the House approved. It was also expected that the Senate would approve the House's version of going from two license plates to just one in the rear. The Senate version, however, would require the current two plates. The one plate idea was soundly criticized by police authorities throughout the state. And it would be, um, I would like to kind of know maybe later on, uh, Officer Melky, what your version, what, the, what our police version uh, is about the, the license plates, how you uh, gentlemen feel there. Um, but now that the bill has passed through both the House and the Senate, there will be joint meetings to reconcile and compromise the two versions. Insiders say that the biggest real reason that both chambers are cutting the amount of the raise in gasoline tax is, sought, is selfish. Legislators want to get reelected. Nothing seems to turn off the voters to a candidate more than a candidate advocating a big raise in a tax. The bill, the bill must be done in the General Assembly by March 31st before heading to Governor DeWine's desk. So we should know the final result in a week. Keeping with bills involving driving. We are all aware of traffic cameras in certain cities recording violations of red lights, stop signs, and speeding. Ohio State Representative Tom Patton has introduced four bills that would limit cities' use of traffic cameras. Probably the most infamous municipality in the state using cameras is our neighboring community of Lindale. Patton feels that the stated reason for the use of these cameras being for safety is just bunk. He feels it is strictly for money only. His uh, House Bill 139 would, permit it, would prohibit communities that don't operate a fire department or EMS service from using traffic cameras. He says it's hypocritical for communities to use cameras and claim it's about safety, yet don't even have fire or EMS departments. House Bill 140 would prohibit governments with populations under 200 citizens from using traffic cameras. Years ago, the legislature prohibited communities with less than 200 residents from having a mayor's court. This is when Lindale started using traffic cameras. House Bill 141 prohibits communities from using a number of traffic camera tickets that are more than twice its population. Lindale gets around $1 million a year in revenue and has about 173 people. For 2017, Lindale took in about $1.3 million in revenue. Now House Bill 142 would prohibit governments from raising more than 30% of their total revenue from tickets generated as a result of the cameras. Patton said his constituents include many elderly people taking their grandchildren to beautiful parks here in Brooklyn. That requires them to drive through Lindale. Some have complained to him that they have been nabbed by the cameras both to and from the park. People can't afford it, he said. We will see if these bills go anywhere. And that concludes my report. Next up is the Board of Zoning Appeals, Commissioner Colsar. Thank you, Mr. Banker. Uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals met on March 21st and heard the following request from Larry Kincaid for variances for a swimming pool. One was for a three-foot variance uh, from the distance required between the principal structure and the swimming pool, and the other was a four-foot variance uh, from the minimum distance required between the side lot line and the swimming pool at 9203 and Sonia. Uh, the next scheduled Board of Zoning Appeals meeting is the April 18th there at 6 p.m. here in the City Hall Conference Room. Uh, I also have a report for our Community Reinvestment Housing Council uh, meeting, which was held uh, today at 5.30 here. And this, uh, this council meets uh, once a year to go over applications and to hear uh, the report uh, given by myself for uh, the abatements that we have uh, and this is a program where any any improvements that you make to your home um, that are subject to an increase in, in taxes from the county can be abated for five, five years so 
Uh, this year we only had two applications come in. Um, there were only three projects that came in that qualified. And you know, the projects vary as to what is uh, uh, allowable to be able to receive this abatement. So it's something that I think people need to look and try and utilize a little bit more. And if anybody ever has any questions on that, please feel free to give me a call. Thank you, that completes my report. Thank you, Mr. Colsar. Next up is our school board liaison, Councilman Ryan Shockey. Thank you. The school board met on Tuesday, March 19th. Sports Director Verba gave the student achievement presentation, which included a talk about winter sports. The hockey team was uh, named division champions, even though they were unsure if they'd have enough students to form a team originally. Wrestler, I'm not going to try last names, by the way. <laughs> Wrestler Seth M. signed uh, with Defiant, Defiance College. Marcello was a state qualifier in bowling. The eighth grade girls basketball team were PAC champions. And other achievements uh, were given by Superintendent Glykoff, including, it included two students receiving scholarships, one for teaching at Toledo, and another student received a scholarship for theater at OU, and she happened to be the lead in the Willy Wonka uh, musical. There were a total of 130 students involved in the musical a couple of weeks ago, and 1,508 community members attended the performance throughout that weekend. The second of three finance forums regarding the May levy was held on March 20th. Uh, and that ends my report. Thank you. Planning Commission had a special meeting on Thursday, March 14th to hear a request from Michael Love of Gateway Park LLC for a conditional use in a general industrial district for a temporary outdoor storage at Zero Memphis Avenue. Um, they desire to store some um, new flatbed trailers in the northwest corner of that parking lot and the committee unanimously approved this request pending the approval of council and we will vote on that approval this evening. Uh, the trailers must be approved or excuse me removed from the premises no later than July the 15th. Our next regularly scheduled planning commission meeting will take place on Thursday April 4th at 6 30 p.m. to hear the following. A request from Echo Site for a new cell tower at 8720 Brook Park Road. A request from Boxes Builders for a preliminary site plan approval for a self storage facility at 11400 Brook Park Road. A request from Adam Signs for a new freestanding sign for the plaza on the existing foundation at 6910 Bidoff Avenue. And a request from Robert Corna for prime properties for a preliminary site plan approval for a gas station at 3580 Ridge Road. And that gas station would um, be updating and replacing one well, that's already there, it's not a new gas station. And that concludes our committees, commissions, and boards. We'll now move on with reports of council. We begin this evening with Mrs. Pucci. Thank you, good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Mr. Ardito and Ms. Kral for speaking this evening. And Chief Milky, when it's the director's reporting time, could you please address the, his question on the situation on the turn lane on Ridge? Mr. Ardito's, okay, thank you. I have not, I was not able to attend the uh, previously scheduled financial forums for the schools, so I did sit down last week for over an hour and I met with Dr. Glykoff um, just to review the finances and everything relating to the levy and you know what the revenues are and the expenditures. Um, so I would like to thank him for his time. And I think it was really um, timely what Ms. Krall said about the extracurriculars. I had a resident call me last week and they called me about something else, but then they started talking about the school levy. And they said, you know, I've been hearing with each levy for quite a number of years that if it doesn't pass, that the extracurriculars are gonna be cut. And this resident was kind of insinuating that it's just kind of like empty threats and nothing ever happens. Well, what I said was that yes, when the schools do not have enough revenue, that is where the cuts are going to start because they can't cut any critical um, core educational programs. Um, as Ms. Kral said, extracurriculars are very, very important for our students. They, they provide opportunities in you know, learning how to work together as a team and leadership skills and it also does help them when they're applying to college. Colleges are looking not only for the grades, but also community service and involvement and also how you participated in extracurriculars in your school. So I guess that was just something I wanted to mention to residents that 
these aren't empty threats or, or they're, they're not threats that the schools are making, but that is where the cuts have to begin, unfortunately. And I also reminded this resident that at one point we were in a serious situation and we did not have a play. And I couldn't remember if it was for one year or two, but there was um, cuts that were made where they could not have a play. So um, I would encourage everyone to please get all the information you need on issue one. Early voting begins, I think it's April 9th. So um, get all the information you need. I am supporting it and contact the superintendent, attend one of the finance forums, or contact a school board member. I received a couple complaints after the last council meeting relating to issues with the Dominion gas meter replacements, and I would like to thank Mr. Verba and also Mr. Courtney um, for looking into the complaints. Uh, one of the issues that I noticed that I think needed attention, and this really kind of only it happens, I think, in the cold weather because they can't pour concrete, and that's the condition that the uh, where this where they have to tear up the sidewalks. It's the condition of how they leave it because they're pretty much just all over the place. And we do have people who walk, we have people who walk their dogs, kids walking to school, and um, I do think that this is an area that I think they could do a little bit better job. Um, Mr. Burba, I know there was scheduled tentatively to start addressing some of this on March 21st. Do we know if they were able to as far as starting the um, repair and... The date I had was April 1st they were supposed oh, to. Eight, oh, okay. Thank you. I thought there was something on March 21st. I'll have to go back in my notes. Thank you. Um, so I would like to reiterate that if you do have a problem, the system that is set up is you. they should call the toll-free number which is 1-800-544-5768. And after that, if you don't have satisfaction, then contact the city. And I don't know if that goes to service or building or if it matters. Service. Service, okay, thank you. Um, I would also like to mention again that if any resident would like to have their clergy member uh, offer the prayer before council to please contact one of us, you can see that we are rotating, and I personally would like to make sure that we're being inclusive of all the religious beliefs of our residents in the community. So don't hesitate to contact any one of us if you'd like to invite one of your clergy members to offer the prayer before council. And Mr. Kulsar, um, if you could give council a copy of the CRA report, I'd appreciate that. And I believe that completes my report, thank you. Next up is Mrs. Bubbier. Thank you. I think I'm pronouncing this right, Mrs. Crawl. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you, congratulate you on all your son's achievements. Many times, like I've said in the past, uh, they get to have such wonderful uh, achievements and successes because of parents such as you who take time and energy to come up here and say, you know, your two cents about what you feel. Um, and yes, nowadays, uh, schools do look for not only academics, it seems like today everybody's smart. You've got to have that little extra thing whether you can sing, dance, play a, a, an instrument, uh, do cross country or uh, hockey or whatever it is. So um, I do want you to know that I do support issue uh, one and, and I, I do hope that it does pass. I've said in the past, you know, I always wanted other people's children to have as many opportunities as my kids have had. And so I will be supporting it, as will my husband. Um, and I appreciate all your passion um, that you exhibited up here. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to just say a, a couple reminders with the weather changing and the beginning of April. Um, and I checked with Mr. Verba. That's the time we can start putting out our shrubbery uh, that you know that we're cleaning up our backyards. And it's going to be nice these next couple days. So I know people will start raking and uh, maybe even trying to bring that lawnmower out. I hope not, but um, that sometimes happens. I know myself this past weekend I was raking my backyard and, and thinking about yeah, it would be nice to get this junk out of the yard. So and also with this nice weather, please keep in mind it's till April 1st. The parking bans outside. I know um, you know people are having a lot of visitors and um, and they're just forgetting about you know you're not allowed to park overnight. So that stops April 1st. So please keep that in mind. Um, lastly, 
We have so many wonderful uh, little churches here in our city, and some of them are having fish fries. Uh, that's so, if you can get a chance, you know, we only have three more weeks of Lent, so uh, if you want to get out there and support some of the churches and you don't want to cook fish in your house and get your house all stinky, please support some of the churches. And even our neighboring city, uh, Parma, if you feel like going to St. Charles uh, Borromeo on Ridge Road, they were voted the best church fish fry in Parma. So if you get a chance to go there, it's worth it. And that pretty much completes my report. Thank you. Mr. Jay. Thank you. I just got a question, and I, I guess uh, I'm going to have to go with, I hate to put him on the spot over there, Mr. Colsar. <laughs> but I've gotten multiple, multiple call, calls on them, all them trees being cut down all the way to the back that the city wanted the city cut them all down. And I said, I believe the sewer district is involved in that. But can you give us an update on why they cut them, what they're doing, and if they're going to replant them? I can, I can tell you that the sewer district issued a letter explaining all that, and they also sent notifications to everyone in the area. I'm kind of out of the loop on, the, on that. I'm sorry, Mr. Tansky, I don't have a great answer for you, except that I know that that info was put out there. I think the letter's even on our website explaining it. Mayor, is there something you could add into that? Or are you going to give a report on it? Or, or no? Sure, I can. Um, so that is private property right there. That is uh, Brooklyn Acres Mutual Home Property. They worked with the uh, Brooklyn Acres Mutual Board uh, to reach a kind of common consensus on the tree removals and the replanting pattern. Uh, They're working on the sanitary sewer stormwater uh, treatment over there. So with the Ohio Clean Act, uh, Ohio Clean Water Act, I'm sorry, uh, there's certain mandates that the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District has to do over the course of the next 10 years. And um, one of these things is to eliminate cross connections in various ways where the sewer and the sanitary are connected in, in certain areas. This is one of those areas where this will help in that long-term endeavor. So uh, again, this, is, this isn't a city project. Uh, they have briefed the city on this project just because it's in the city of Brooklyn. But this was an agreement uh, with the private owners for Glowing Acres Mutual, and they have uh, they have an agreement with them on the restoration of that property. Did you hear of any kind of retention pond or anything that's going to be put in there? So one of the, one of the key goals of that is uh, to minimize flooding. Okay. So we don't know if there's going to be a retention. There will be a retention, retention area, and I, and I don't know if you've you've noticed it's it is sort of a retention area already. Right. <laughs> And then they're going to replant trees, you said. Correct. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Flipke. Thank you, Mr. Van Kirk. Last Thursday at the Chamber of Commerce luncheon, members got a chance to preview the menu for Taste of Brooklyn to be held at Lavelle Party Center on Saturday evening, April 6, 2019. The food was superb. If you haven't purchased your tickets yet, there's still time. Not only will you be supporting the scholarship program for graduating seniors, you will also hear our amazing high school jazz band and be drinking and dining for only $20 now or $25 at the door. I can't think of a better deal. On March 12, 2019, the Laurel Garden Club had a speaker who gave us many ideas on how to have a great lawn without chemicals. If you were not able to attend, I will have handouts and will share some of the information he gave us. Call me at 216-671-6777 or find some at City Hall. They will be available at City Hall next week. Keystone Tailoring will be closing its doors soon. When the factory was built, it was the old Joseph and Feist. I, along with many others of my age group, worked there at one time or another. One of my aunts spent all of her working years there on West 53rd. Brooklyn Historical Society recently made a huge historical find at Keystone. The retirement records from January 2nd, 1917 of Moritz Joseph, the Mr. Joseph of Joseph and Feist, eight ledgers dating back to the 1800s through the early 1900s, among them are inventory of buttons and buckles, timesheets, investment records, purchases, and receivables. This is what we do at the Historical Society. We keep records from our past. 
although most of these records from, are from Cleveland and the site on West 53rd Street and possibly earlier sites on Superior Avenue, we are thankful that Keystone never threw them in the trash. If you have an interest in history, come and see us at the Historical Society on Tuesdays from 10 until 2. You don't have to be a member to come. Gold's Gym has a new name and owner. Some residents said they thought they were closing, but that's not true. No changes have been made to membership, and Silver Sneakers program is still available there. And that ends my report. Thank you. This is Big Ranchard. Thank you. I want to thank Kelly for speaking tonight and for all you do for our students. I understand firsthand about threats from school districts coming into reality. Um, when I was in seventh grade attending North Holmes' schools, our uh, community failed to pass a levy and spring sports were cut as a result. Um, I do support issue one and hope that your son and the other students continue to have busy days filled with extracurricular activities next school year. Last week, I attended a brown bag, brown bag lunch forum regarding the county housing plan, which has been passed by county council and set to begin in 2020. It was very informational, discussing how county funds are to be transitioned from demolition to rehab for vacant and abandoned properties. At the height of the national foreclosure crisis, Cuyahoga County was well into our housing crisis and was one of the hardest hit counties in the country. Since the announcement of this housing plan in 2014, Cuyahoga County has focused funds into demolition of rundown abandoned properties. Finally, we're at a time where our leaders feel comfortable transitioning that money from demo to rehab. The program will be run by the Department of Development at the county level, and I was happy to hear that they plan to talk with CDCs and first ring suburbs about priorities and how to best implement, implement this program. Finally, there was an article on News Channel 5 last week regarding SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Programs Benefits. Apparently, there are hundreds of thousands of Ohioans aged 60 and older who are struggling to eat simply because they have not signed up for these benefits that they qualify for. The Summit County Department on Aging found that the two of the biggest reasons are pride and lack of information. According to the Summit County Jobs and Family Services Assistant Director Ladd, there, when, when you're doing a SNAP budget, it's like doing taxes. There are lots of deductibles you can get just because you're a senior or because of your medical expenses. If you're struggling to put food on your table, I encourage you to find out if you qualify. These assistant programs are there to help you. A great resource in Greater Cleveland is the United Way hotline, which can be reached by simply dialing 211. And that ends my report. Thank you, Mr. Sellers. Thank you. A um, couple things. Breakfast with the Bunny, Saturday, April 6, 2018. It's going to be at eight Applebee's Bar and Grill from 8 to 10. Come have breakfast with the Easter Bunny. Each child will get to pick a plastic egg for a chance to win a prize. Cost is $8 for adults, $6 for kids up to age 12. Uh, pancakes, bacon, breakfast potatoes, milk, juice, coffee, and soft drinks. All proceeds will benefit the class of 2019 post prompt. And if you want tickets to it, please contact anybody on the post prompt committee for tickets to it. Also that evening, as Barb mentioned, is the Taste of Brooklyn being held at La Villa this year. And last thing is, thank you to Kelly for talking about supporting issue one. I'm also a supporter of it. Um, been on a committee, outside committee, of uh, finance and facilities that we've been working with uh, Dr. Glykoff, the treasurer and everything, so we've had first-hand chance to see what their chances of trying to improve how they can work uh, wiser, financially smarter, everything. Uh, they've inherited things from past administrations People might have a thing of, well, things happen in the past. How do we know what they're going to do in the future? The moves they've made are, are in the right direction. You have to trust them. Um, please support issue one if you can. It's a very important issue. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Selhurst. Uh, just one item that wasn't covered this evening. I've gotten uh, several communications from people regarding the houses being raised on Tiedemann Road. There are four houses that are currently being uh, torn down two of them at the corner of Tiedemann and Memphis and then two more down closer to um, 480. Uh, that's been in the works for quite some time. The county has finally uh, 
we're kind of at the top of the, the list now to get those torn down. Uh, the ones at the corner of Tiedemann and Memphis, uh, the city owns all of that property, and so that's going to be marketed now as one giant plot of land to hope to get um, a, um, either a lease or a buyer for that property. And then the other ones are being raised, and we were having some security issues down with those houses down there. And so uh, getting those out of there, well, I'm sure the police were happy to see them go. And so uh, that's what's going on there. Uh, those are all city-owned properties. And so um, I, just got, I got several communications from that, so I just wanted to put that out there. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thanks, Council President Kirk. I know a lot of it has been said on the, the school levy tonight. Uh, one thing that has not been mentioned, there is one more financial forum. Um, that's going to be at April 10th at 6.30 at the Brooklyn Fire Station Community Room. Uh, again, April 10th, 6.30, Brooklyn Fire Station Community Room. Uh, a lot of people depend on Facebook and other social media to get answers to questions. That is not the best place to go. Um, if you want to speak to somebody, uh, talk to the superintendent, talk to the school treasurer, uh, attend one of these meetings. If that meeting is not good for you, shoot the uh, email over to the superintendent or the treasurer. I'm sure they'll get back to you right away or one of the school board members. That's the best place to go. I know a lot of people ask me questions about school finances, and I'm well aware that they had a lot of cuts uh, through the state of Ohio, but I cannot answer uh, this uh, individual questions about their budget because it's completely different than the city's budget so I always forward those on to the superintendent so those are the best places to go they have the right answers that they provide you um, I have a neighborhood meeting scheduled for this Wednesday March 27th at 630 at the Brooklyn Library all are welcome to attend composting will begin by our service department on April 1st so if stuff's building up it's a good time to get it out on uh, to your lawn um, McCauley, uh, Mr. Van Kirk brought up McCauley Consultants is an uh, ordinance that we have on the agenda tonight. Uh, last year, uh, when speaking to City Council about passing the upcoming appropriations budget for this year, um, I identified some needs of the city that I've been mayor for three plus years now. And there are certain areas that we struggle in City Hall to complete. One of these is communications, getting out proper press releases, concise, cohesive messages from City Hall as uh, my administrative team individually partakes in all of this. So um, this McCauley and Company will come in and help us with that as well as uh, help provide grants. Again, uh, um, there's no individual person that's in charge of grant writing here at the City of Brooklyn. I do some of them. The directors individually do some. And you know we're pretty good about it, but I think there are a lot of opportunities for us to improve in this area. Uh, so we're gonna. Uh, this is a way for me to kind of test these areas with communication and grant writing, and see what our our long-term needs are. If we need a full-time employee, or if this is uh, if we can work with this on a consultant basis. Also help my individual administrative team learn these things a little bit better as things change, especially in the communication end. Uh, me being 37, you think that I would know everything about social media. It is not true. Uh, meeting with these consultants, they taught me a few things I've never even heard of. Um, so this is how rapidly things change over time. So we need to stay with it so we are able to reach the audiences of Brooklyn and get people engaged and get people coming to meetings and, and completing this dialogue. So um, hopefully I covered everything there. And uh, I thank Council for their openness and their approval through the Finance Committee of this. And uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. We'll now move on to director's reports. We begin this evening with the recreation manager, Ms. McGinty. Good evening. Good I actually made fun of him tonight. I said, I'll talk first and then I'll die with you, but it died with me first. Um, our last public theme night um, skate will be Friday, April 5th from 8 to 9, 15 p.m. The theme is Cleveland sports, so wear your Cleveland sports clothing and receive free skate rental. Spring into fitness promotion will be held April 7th through April 13th. All recreation classes will be free. Buy a yearly pass, get two months free, or buy a monthly pass and get two weeks free. And our 
annual Easter egg hunt will be held Saturday, April 13th at 11 a.m. Registration begins at 10.30 a.m. at the Brooklyn Senior Community Center. Resident children and six and under are invited to participate. Rain or shine, and don't forget to bring your basket. That concludes my report. Thank you. Next up is um, our finance director, Mr. Ruggins. I will continue to track here briefly. Good evening. Uh, just very br briefly, um, as part of your packet on Thursday, I sent the finan financial report for February. So uh, very briefly, an um, overview of the general fund revenues. We're pretty much trending in line with prior year. We're 1% less than prior year. And we're 17% of the estimated amount, which is in line with our with our budget, as we said during the budget process last fall. The expenses were trending pretty consistently with last year as well, at 1% more than prior year. Overall, the general fund balance, unencumbered balance, was $14.2 million at the end of February. And lastly, as we've talked about over the past six weeks, um, the financial transparency portal site will be going live this week. Uh, we expect to put something on our homepage as well as the finance page as far as directing traffic to that. It's really exciting. I'm looking forward to see what kind of traffic we get. That concludes my report tonight. Thank you, Mr. Grews, and again, thank you for your work on that portal. Excuse me, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, are you going to let us know ahead of time what changes were incorporated or weren't, or do you have a list of those or not? Yes, I will send that out. Thank you. All right, and lastly is uh, Chief Melky. There were a couple of questions that were asked your direction about the two license plates and also the turn lanes. Sure. Thanks, Mr. Banker. Uh, first, the uh, one plate versus two plate uh, debate, Mrs. Belbeer. I can tell you the police departments prefer the two plates. There's many times that we have... Uh, come across identifying suspects or traffic violators by the front plate. Uh, I can think of one just today that we had a shoplifter that was identified going the other way in traffic that an officer turned around and was able to affect the arrest. So I know the uh, Cuyahoga County Police Chiefs Association, Association is sending a letter to the legislature down there um, supporting the, the current standard, which is two plates. Thank you, Mike. Um, regarding the turn lane, Mr. Ardito did bring that up to my attention. Uh, last council meeting, I went out there and looked at it myself. Um, it wasn't a, it wasn't an issue before then. I don't know where it came up as an issue now, but I looked and it mirrors the other side of the intersection. It's about a two or three foot gap between the turning lanes and the the uh, regular lanes, lane one and two. Um, all I can theorize is that the traffic lane is supposed to be 12 feet um, wide. And the traffic en engineers, when they redesigned Ridge Road, probably designed that as such and leaving the gap between the two. Um, I haven't had any other, other complaints about making the left turn from, from North Cliff onto Ridge Road, as Mr. Ardito states. It's something uh, I've looked at the uh, accidents to see if we had any related accidents after Mr. Ardito um, brought it to my attention last time. I did not find any related traffic accidents there. As far as getting it restriped uh, during this, I know the, uh, the plans have already been put out for bidding and it, it required changing that. So at this time, I don't think there's any particular reason why we should. Um, I wanted to let everybody know that Menards will be opening soon and the traffic light is now operational. The one that used to blink out on Brook Park Road. So uh, just be aware that the light may change on you. And that completes my report. Thank you, Chief, appreciate that. Right at this time, I'm going to make a motion that council move into executive session to uh, interview uh, Jacob Bruzzi for the position of recreation commissioner. Uh, in that meeting will be uh, council, briefly the mayor, and then also the candidate as well. Second. To adjourn to executive session, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Harry Belbeer? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Art Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Sellers? Yes. Order. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the confirmation for the appointment uh, of recreation commissioner, and I will make the motion uh, that council um, approve the, approve the uh, position for uh, Jack Abruzzi for recreation commissioner. Second. To confirm the appointment, Kathy Pucci. Yes. Mary Belbeer. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Art Politsky. Yes. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Meg Ranshaki. Yes. Andy Sellers. Yes. Jack, welcome on board. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations.
All right, the three uh, notifications for notice of donations has already been read to the record, so we'll move on with the request. The first one is a re uh, cons uh, confirmation for the conditional use of Gateway Park, as I discussed in the uh, Finance Committee report. Are there any comments or questions regarding that? All right, I'll make them. To grant the conditional use. Second. To confirm the conditional use, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Barb Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selgertz? Yes. Uh, the next request is for bid approval for the American Roadway Extension and Rehab, and the uh, lowest and best bid was from Fabrizi Trucking and Paving for $1,108,552. Move to award the bid to Fabrizi Trucking and Paving as the lowest and best bid. Second. To approve the bid, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Barb Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selberts? Yes. Next up is Ordinance 2019 7. As I made mention, we um, are going to amend this this evening, and so I will read through those changes. Uh, under Chapter 746, there will be a new Section 746.99 penalty. I will read that, what that penalty will be here in a moment. Uh, next, under um, Section 746, uh, subsection B5, we are striking all of Section E. And uh, that it used to read, a tenant who is injured by a landlord's violation of subsection D may recover damages in the amount of one month's rent and any security deposit. And uh, we have to strike this because we do not have the authority to add such a uh, clause to an ordinance. And so the law director has advised us to strike that. And then subsection F will now become subsection E. Then underneath 7, uh, and then G will become F. Then underneath 746.02, obligation to change lock. Subsection D will be, strike, will be striked from this ordinance. If a landlord takes action to prevent a tenant who has compiled, complied with the section from changing a lock, the tenant may seek a temporary restraining order, preliminary injunction, or permanent injunction ordering the landlord to refrain from preventing the tenant from changing the lock. And again, that has to be struck because, again, we do not have the authority to add such to our ordinance. And then the last change will be under um, 746.99 penalty. Any person who violates subsection D of section 746.01 or who fails to abide by the provisions of subsection A of section 746.02 is guilty of a minor misdemeanor. Move to amend as was read into the record. Second. To amend, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Barb Politsky? Yes. Brian Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selberts? Yes. This ordinance is placed on second reading. We will vote for uh, adoption at our next meeting. Up for third reading adoption this evening is Ordinance 2019-9, amending Section 351.03, prohibiting standing or parking spaces of the codified orders of the City of Brooklyn. This is in regards to uh, extending the uh, prohibited area for parking 12 inches from the widest section of the apron. Move to adopt. Second. To adopt, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Art Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. Ordinance 2019-12 is on second reading, but we do hope to pass by suspension of the rules. This is authorizing the payment of 130530 the C.W. Courtney Company for professional engineering fees related to the former AG site roadway extension south project. We are going to pass this by emergency this evening uh, at the request of Medical Mutual. They want to make sure all their ducks in a row to make sure uh, that, the, that the road construction gets completed on time. Introduced by all to suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Art Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selgert? Yes. To adopt, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvere? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Bart Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Sellers? Yes. The next two ordinances are on second reading. Ordinance 2019-13, providing for the issuance and sale of not to exceed 1420000 of notes in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay costs of reconstructing road on road, road on alley, and declaring emergency. Ordinance 2019-14, providing for the issuance and sale of not to exceed $2.1 million of notes in anticipation of the issuance of bonds to pay costs of extending American Road by constructing, grading, draining, paving, constructing curbs, gutters, and driveway aprons, installing storm sewers, and making other improvements as designated in the plans approved or to be approved by Council. Under new business this evening, Ordinance 2019-15, is um, up on first reading, but we do hope, hope to pass by suspension of the rules. 
This is authorizing the mayor to enter into a consulting services agreement with Macaulay and Company LLC to provide various services for the city of Brooklyn. Both myself and the mayor have uh, uh, talked about this issue this evening, and the cost of the city will be five thousand dollars per month. It is a one-year contract. Introduce by also suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvier? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Art Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. To adopt, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belvier? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Art Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Yes. Andy Selhurst? Yes. And lastly, on first reading is Ordinance 2019-16, amending Section 351.20 waivers of the codified ordinances of the City of Brooklyn. But that concludes our agenda this evening. As I said earlier, we will uh, make a motion to move to executive session to discuss um, the possible purchase of public property. Uh, in that, I'll make the motion in a second, but once that meeting is over, uh, we will conclude our meeting. No further um, items will be discussed or voted on after that meeting. So I will make a motion that council move into executive session with council, the mayor, uh, Mr. Butler, and Mr. Raguse to discuss the possible purchase of public property. Second. To adjourn to executive session, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Mary Belbeer? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Mark Politsky? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Meg Ryan Shockey? Andy Selhurst? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed evening.